morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Megan, on this week's Writers on Writers Over Trip Accessible Podcast. Your host, Patrick Greenwood. This gentleman needs no introduction whatsoever, but he's going to get one anyway. All right. Mr. Jim Flynn. Good morning, Jim. How are you today? I'm great, Patrick. You? I'm doing great. Well, before everyone knows, Jim's been on the show multiple times. Well, he's a great friend, great golfer, and everything, but I'm also a huge fanboy. So we're going to cover a few things here. Hit your second shot first. The 10 greatest golf, which was, by the way, I don't agree with, but we've already had that argument. So oh, you're, you're <laughs> wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> and of course, Trillion is a New Billion, Better Than Even by Jim Flynn. So Jim, first of all, thank you very much for coming on today. A huge fan of your work. We talk about your writing all the time. You've got great humor. I can't be, you know, crack up. I disagree on the 10 greatest golfers, but we'll, hey, we'll wrong. mind melt on that later. Um I guess the first thing is obviously we want to cover today was a couple of topics. Number one, uh, let's talk about that hoodie because that's a that that blue is really working right now. So tell that me about is, the hoodie. Man. That is that I asked you to. This is the only part of this is that's rehearsed, uh, audience. Um, Patrick <laughs> has a charity that buys bicycle helmets for kids in Vietnam, and you saw on part of his intro he had some products up there. One of them is a hoodie. I bought a couple of these. See the cycle, and I'll tell you, I am a hoodie aficionado not just hawaiian shirts but in the winter i wear hoodies mm -hmm. and i have i don't know 10 hoodies this is mm -hmm. the best one this is a great hoodie and for the money it's fantastic i mean now there's a u.s senator who wears a hoodie you ever no. see the guy the big yeah. guy from pennsylvania so the world is getting better in many ways this is a tremendous hoodie go on and buy one or two i'm buying more i'm giving them away they're they're you know, not just supporting a nice charity. You can send them 10 bucks if you want to do that, but just buy this hoodie. Trust me. It's an excellent hoodie. Well, thank you, Jim. Thanks yeah. for the prop on that. I really appreciate that as well. Obviously, first thing we wanted to get in today was really kind of a fun thing is you had a question for me and you wanted to 60 minutes me before I 60 minutes you. So let's, yeah. let's see what you got. Go ahead. I'm ambushing you with this question. <laughs> um, and as I said, it's spontaneous and unrehearsed, just like they used to say on uh, Meet the Press or something. Absolutely. Here's my question for you. We've both been writers for a while. Yes. What is the objective of the first chapter of your, any novel? Oh, boy. I would say probably uh, set the tone and direction of what the story is going to be about. Eh, wrong. <laughs> you, you got Final Jeopardy wrong. I knew you'd say something like that. <laughs> Okay, fine. What's the answer there, Here's Professor the, Jim? <laughs> the answer is, and I had to learn this, mm -hmm. the answer is to make the reader need to read the second chapter. Uh, you want me on that wall. You need me on that. Read it. That's the objective. What's the objective of the first line? That's why the first line of a book is really important. And mm -hmm. I, when I go and um, I go to a train station and they mm -hmm. have a, all these free books, you know, mm -hmm. paperbacks people have donated. And I just go, and there must be a few hundred of them. Mm -hmm. And I regularly go to the station. I always pick up and read the first line. And you can tell the book's going to be any good. The first, first line. line. The first line's got to hook them. The first mm -hmm. chapter's got to hook them. I'll mm -hmm. give you a follow-up question. What's mm -hmm. the objective of the second chapter? Uh, I'm not, not going to be a complete smart ass, but I'll say get them to read the third. Exactly. That's <laughs> the objective of every chapter. <laughs> Hook, hook to the hook to the hook, yeah. The main the main commandment mm -hmm. is to not be boring. Because mm -hmm. if you're boring, mm -hmm. how many how many alternatives to forget about books, mm -hmm. TikTok, and you can stream Breaking Bad for the forty second time. Mm -hmm. There's a million things people can do. Don't be boring. A anybody, you have a lot of writers who watch your podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you get anything out of what I have to say today, mm -hmm. all I ask you to do is go to my website. It's right down at the bottom, jimflynn6.com, and look around mm -hmm. and see if you like my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. If you do, you might want to buy a book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to take some of the books off. Really? Uh, yes. But um, if you, you know, probably a lot of those writers aren't golfers. Mm -hmm. um, but if they have somebody in their life who is, Mm -hmm. The big uh, sales times for the golf books are Christmas and Father's mm -hmm. Day, because mm -hmm. people don't know what to buy this mm -hmm. dork in their life who's a f golfer. Yeah. So um, um, it's and they're very reasonably priced. As I said, they're about the price of a greeting card. But they're but they're funny, 
I, I especially obviously the top 10 golfers and mm-hmm. I just agree. I think Nancy Lopez should be like number two or number three on the list. Yeah. We've argued yeah. that already to blue. Yeah. Um, but the thing about, I love about your books is not only is it the humor, but even if I was not a golfer and I really just want to have an hour of quiet time reading to just laugh my ass off. Your books do that for me. I love picking it up. It's a, the good thing about these books is that they're a very quick read. Um, very well put together. But the funny thing is, like, when I first met you, the first time you came on the podcast, we talked about this one. Hit your second shot first. This is actually a life book. It's not just a golf book. It really is about, well, why are you waiting to do the right thing? Why are you waiting till you make a mistake before you do the right thing? Why not do what you're supposed to do first to prevent having a bad problem happening in the beginning? And I, I thought I really kind of apply that not only to my golf game, which, by the way, is okay. It's just life in general, right? Why are you waiting to do the right thing? You know, why well, did you, you know, yeah. because of all the favors, you can call me anytime and I'll give you a lecture about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> More than happy to. I love yeah. it. But good, it's beautiful, uh, beautiful stuff. Now, you brought up something interesting. Taking the books down, you and I are both going for a very similar journey as writers, is that we made the decision to kind of take a book and we're taking it down from the website and we're now in the process of redrafting and rewriting it. And you and I are doing it kind of for two different, you know, disparate reasons. But when you decided to say, I want to take, you know, this book series down and I want to rewrite three books, what was really what other than the sell of the book and then that what are some of the driving reasons why you wanted to do that? Well, just to give people a little background, I my first book was called Be Sincere Even When You Don't Mean It. It sold pretty well. It's very quirky. If you go on the website, you can take a look at it. The people who like it really like it. Mm-hmm. But I'd have to say you have to be a football fan who likes astronauts, astrophysics, the Hawaii triathlon. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's not exactly a romance novel. Right. And it's not a novel at all. But it, it did pretty well for a mm-hmm. first book. And then I decided, well, I'm going to write a novel. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything about writing. I didn't even know that I didn't know anything. Mm-hmm. So I, well, how hard could it be? I'm going to write a novel. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm a pretty good writer. I always have had a knack for writing it. But I'm also funny. I'm like yes, naturally funny. Give you a quick example. Mm-hmm. I had a doctor tell me I needed brain surgery. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, yeah, but other than that, how am I doing? <laughs> I really did that. That's a true mm-hmm. story. That's mm-hmm. how I approach life. And mm-hmm. probably, but I have that going for me. So I can mm-hmm. write a funny book, whatever I want. Mm-hmm. And so I've had, I had a marketing guy say to me, don't bother the novels. You make money on the other books. Mm-hmm. Write the short, funny books. They're much easier to write, and mm-hmm. and you make money. Now, now, I haven't lost money on the novels. I've made a few bucks, but mm-hmm. um, and I don't want to say I don't making tons of money. There's not a Brinks truck pulling up to my house with not, not yet, not yeah, yet. But <laughs> but I make my objective was to make enough money to mm-hmm. pay for my annual golf expenses, mm-hmm. and I've exceeded that for six years. Mm-hmm. And the golf books sell, they're like evergreen, they sell all the time. Somewhere in the world, somebody buys one of those books every day. I love which it. Which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know, you just think, hey, somebody in Japan is reading this book. And, and you know, with Amazon, they read some of it, they read online. So, mm-hmm. okay, that's one segment. We're not going to talk about that because the people watching this podcast aren't going to write <laughs> golf books. And they're not going to write um, the other stuff. They can go online and see what I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so I wrote a novel, and mm-hmm. it won an award. It actually won two awards. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, mm-hmm. Award-winning novelist. And yes. then I went to uh, Dunkin' Donuts that they bought coffee, and they charged me full price. <laughs> oh, there you! Don't you know who I am? You know, it, I'm it, Jim Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. that's a dollar fifty then. <laughs> yeah, no, three. No, it's it's. Three dollars and fifty cents, but um, yeah, so big deal. You won an award. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not as successful as I wanted to be, but they're also not as good as I want them to be. Mm-hmm. I made a lot, and there are people who really like them, mm-hmm. and people who like the. No, I did. I did. I like it as well. It was a really good series, but um, and I don't want to get all writery, and and I'm not going to do that and bore people with stuff. But I, I'll, I'll mention a couple things. Mm-hmm. Um, you just learn not to do make a lot of amateurish mistakes. Mm-hmm. For example, in Losing Lola, the first book, I do mm-hmm. a 20-page flashback mm-hmm. 
Well, you learn. That's what happens in a fight. You ever watch the Bourne Identity, the Bourne movies? Mm -hmm. He's always having these flashbacks, getting tortured, but waterboarded in part mm -hmm. of his training. How long the flashbacks last? Five ten, seconds. Yeah, They're like a seconds, dream. Yeah. They're a dream. Boom, boom, and then he's back. Mm -hmm. If you do a twenty-page mm -hmm. flashback, you take people out of the story. You take them. You've built up all this tension. Now that when they go back, they don't even remember what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you flashbacks have to be quick and they have to be dreamlike mm -hmm. and don't get people out of the story for too long. That mm -hmm. That's one example. Another mm -hmm. example is way too many, and a lot of beginning writers do this, way mm -hmm. too many named characters. Because mm -hmm. when you name a character, people subconsciously think they have to remember the name. Right. They don't, they don't know they're doing that, but they see a name, mm -hmm. it's going to be, and then you never mention them again. Mm-hmm. And what that's a that's a book closer for people, mm -hmm. and as as you know on Amazon, a lot of people read online. The Amazon yes. has a subscription service, mm -hmm. so you get paid by how many pages they read. If they buy your book, you get paid whether they read it or not. Mm -hmm. But if they read five pages of your book mm -hmm. and you're confusing them and you're flashing back and they can't figure mm -hmm. out what's going on, you make two and a half cents. They close, yeah. Yeah, exactly. they go on to the next book or they go on tick they go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So and, <laughs> and, and there's a million little things like that. Mm -hmm. And also the um end of the book, mm -hmm. I violate uh, I don't want to get all jargony on you. I don't end the books right. First mm -hmm. two books have to have different endings. But how did you end it though? What I mean, you, that's a good point about an ending because sometimes the ending usually leads to things like, <laughs> for example, you want the ending to feed into something new. Oh, or, it does. It like does. That. that part, um, not the very ending, but the the climax of the story. Climax to it. Is, mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, without giving anything away, mm -hmm. in a James Bond movie, mm -hmm. who shoots the bad guy? Usually James Bond. Or, Not usually or, James or Bond. Or James Bond accomplice. No, always James Bond. Well, okay. Sometimes it's uh, his accomplice. No, also. it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> Sometimes. No. In Fast and Furious, who's the hero at the end? Vin Diesel. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, in, in Jack Reacher... Mm -hmm. Who's the hero? Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. So I'm not giving anything away what I'm doing, but mm -hmm. um, that's that's what has to happen in an adventure, mo murder, mystery, thriller genre. Now, are you are you rewriting? Now, this this is kind of an interesting thing about rewrites. I'm going through the same as well. Mine is more getting rid of what I call distracting content in order to make it to where that too. Book, that too. Yeah, a big part of it is I want the book to be. If it's a romantic book, make it a romantic book. Don't try to make it too much suspense, thriller, romance, whatever, mix the genres up. Uh, are you more doing this where you have two main characters, where one chapter is about one character, the next chapter is about another character, and you're just kind of doing the seesaw back and forth? I notice a lot of people that write will write in that style to say, I have to be in the headspace of the main writer or the main character. Then in the next chapter, it's the, the other character, and then they sort of have a clash at the end. Or are you still going to blended characters throughout the story as well as you're writing well that's a that's a really good question and that's and i didn't want to get all bogged down in this stuff but um that's when i i got in mm -hmm. i got into a couple big time agents mm -hmm. which most people never do mm -hmm. i had big time agents read my manuscript mm -hmm. i don't know if you've been through that dance but oh, yeah. it's it's a it's hard. Most most of the time, you don't even get an answer. Right. Then you get an answer, and they send me a synopsis of the book. Then mm -hmm. you don't get an answer. You know, there's it's a it's a long minuet you have to go through. I got through to three four steps. Hey, send me the manuscript. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. And then both of the times they were rejected, mm -hmm. and they were, were rejected. Um, they said, "Hey, you're a good writer, but your plot structure stinks." And your uh, point of view character, yeah, you have to, it's amateurish. You have to work on that. Mm -hmm. So that's what you just talked about. Yeah. Point of view character, J.R. Johnson is the mm -hmm. protagonist. He's the first person narrator. Right. But what I've done, what the big change, why it's so hard to rewrite these first three books mm -hmm. is what I would do. Uh, I'm reluctant to say this, but I, I would go, I would lapse into what's called omniscient third person. Mm -hmm. Means you can tell what any it's like this godlike person is telling you what everybody else is thinking. Mm 
Right. That mm -hmm. doesn't work in a thriller. Mm -hmm. And so what I have now, the book mm -hmm. I'm writing now has J.R. Johnson is the first person narrator, mm -hmm. but it has two other point of view characters in the third person. Are they in the same chapter? Are you doing a J.R. Johnson chapter? Then somebody else becomes Occasionally the they're in the same chapter. Same chapter. But okay. it says at the beginning of the chapter, it says the person's name. So you know who the point of view character is. Okay. And mm -hmm. and if you do this well, mm -hmm. nobody notices. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the, you know. Hopefully, but are they mean, people it? haven't said to me, "Hey, you used omniscient third person." And but, you know. but are they expecting that? And as you bring up a good point, I I read some novels. You know, I have people come on and read their stuff, and I know sometimes they'll have like Jane chapter one, Bill chapter two, Jane chapter three, Bill yeah. chapter four, and they're just doing this, right? And I guess the industry wants you to write like that because it makes it kind of a predictable format. Where some of us have kind of put three or four characters in every chapter, but there's always a main focus to that. Are you going to be going from J.R. Johnson to his lover and then back to J.R. and then back to his lover, or are you going to be mixing and matching as you're going? Um, mostly it's J.R., but okay. it, it, things happen in different places, and he can't be mm -hmm. in all those places. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons. 80% okay. it's him. Mm -hmm. And some 10% it's the villain and 10% mm -hmm. it's his mentor. Okay. How are you then going to end? Are you talking about, I know you mentioned you're, you're rewriting three of them, right? Mm -hmm. How do you plan on ending one and two? Is it going to be a dead ending where it's just like it could end right oh, there? Oh, no, no, it's not going to be a dead ending. It's going to, and, and, and actually I did. And both the agents said, hey, you did a really good job leading, mm -hmm. telling people, hey, there's some more coming here. Yeah. No, the hooks, that, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're they're not going to dead end. Okay. So you have, now, are you still considering them being standalones? Like if I, you and I met, we hang out, we're in a coffee shop, we just finished playing golf and you hand this beautiful book to me saying better than even. And I pick it up and say, I can read this. Is this still going to be like a standalone? Oh, or, sure. Or do, I, or do I have to have enough background of another book? To be no, able to definitely it? not. And, okay. and in fact, and people say, you can't do this. <laughs> uh, I was, I was, and in fact, I even said this in my blog. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of self-publishing. I'm going to get an agent and mm -hmm. for my novels, I'm going to, you know, go traditional. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm, and I've talked to a marketing guy since then. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy who said, basically you should just give up on the novels. And he helped me market, um, hit your second shot first. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was definitely worth the money. And I mm -hmm. said, no, I'm not going to do that. But I, I, cause I like doing it. Yes. I like writing novels and mm -hmm. I know another guy. Mm -hmm. who was writing novels and they were in like sci-fi nothing mm -hmm. that i would do and he said you know i was going along and i first novel sold a hundred copies mm -hmm. second one mm -hmm. sold a thousand copies third one mm -hmm. sold a thousand copies and then next one sold fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. he said i didn't advertise any, it just i just hit the right book yeah at the right time yep. yeah and, and then people went back and bought the other books mm -hmm. so here's what i'm doing I'm writing this fourth book and I'm going to come out with it when it's ready. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I'm taking the other three off and rewriting them. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be able to rewrite if you haven't read any of these, one of the 50, a hundred thousand new readers who's mm -hmm. going to read this, mm -hmm. you would enjoy this book. You don't need the, in fact, he explains some things that aren't explained in the first three books. Mm -hmm. um, you, so it stands by itself. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to do, and, and the first three of, I don't care. I'm just going to do, I'm, uh, you can't listen to everybody. I'm going on my gut. I'm Good. just going to do what I think I'm going to do. I love do. it. Now you read, is it, are you all going to be, so I went through this on book one. Originally it was called Sunrise in Saigon. Yeah. Uh, I now had to rename it. Yeah, I'm going to rename it. Yeah. You're renaming. So my re, my new one is going to be called Forever Our Sunrise in Saigon. Is the rename of the book. Mm -hmm. right? Are you having to, is this still going to be, you know, trillion is a new billion, better no. than even, or is this completely different? Oh, well, the series is going to be called uh, "Useful Idiot." <laughs> hey, how how appropriate though? Yeah, he's the useful idiot, and and, and he resolves that in the fourth mm -hmm. book. But um, it's going to be a useful idiot series. Mm -hmm. First, for useful idiot, something Lola's in the first book, so it's mm -hmm. going to be the useful idiot something Lola Lola something. You know, second one, useful idiot. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Bitcoin Gambit or Bitcoin mm -hmm. Caper or whatever it is. Bitcoin like Gambit was very good, by the way. Yeah. I really love reading that. That was excellent. But uh, also amateurs, different amateurs mistakes <laughs> than I made in the third one. Um, 
the third one's going to be a lot different has to be a lot different mm-hmm. um not the main plot mm-hmm. you know i um you and i've hired editors in the past mm-hmm. and i had one who um uh, and and she was a successful author mm-hmm. also who wrote um chick porn i call it mm-hmm. um I know that's not the proper genre, but this, these really dirty books for women mm-hmm. that are written by women. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, come on, kid, she wrote them under a uh, pen name. Of course. <laughs> and and I said, come on, tell me, tell me the name. She's, oh, I don't want, I said, just tell me one. Mm-hmm. And I went and looked at it. And I was shocked. It was like, holy smokes. There's no, uh, let's just say the first chapter, they're not holding hands no. uh, watching the sunset. It well, goes, you made, a, you made yeah. a point. The first line is to get you to the second uh, yeah. line, to get you to yeah. the second chapter, to get to the third one. It yeah. works with every genre that's out there right she, now. She's, you know, she wrote like six of them. She said she put three kids through private colleges with, mm-hmm. with the royalties. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Now, yeah. you in this rewriting process, let's talk a little bit about AI, because I know you're a big AI fan. Um, I use AI on my blog side to help do research or topics I'm mm-hmm. doing for why write cybersecurity content for clients. How is AI going to be a, a, a useful tool for you in the rewrite of the next three novels? How do you plan to use AI, not only for the rewrites, but any future golf books that you're working on? As oh, well? I use it for everything. Mm-hmm. And I've learned, and, and I don't want to pretend I'm an expert, but mm-hmm. for a guy who's 70, among the 73 year old writers, I'm probably one of the better AI guys. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. um, Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've used chat GPT. If you use it just vanilla, you get very vanilla crap back. Right. You have to know the prompts. You have to know how to use it. That's right. Mm-hmm. And you assign it a goal. You say, you're my developmental editor. You and I have paid the developmental editors mm-hmm. and I use it all day long. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're my developmental editor. Read these three chapters and tell me where I'm info dumping. Mm-hmm. And for those who are listening, info dumping is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. You're talking too much. You're telling people way too much, too much too, detail. way too talky. And yeah. Uh, and it'll come back and say, by the way, after a while, it gets to know the characters. It say, mm-hmm. JR wouldn't talk like this. Mm-hmm. Um, JR should um, divulge this part of the plot through dialogue. Mm-hmm. Now it'll write for you if you tell it to. I don't do that. I think it's yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan of that either. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, not, not going to do that. Okay. You know, people are doing it. I'm not going to do it. And, and eventually, say, people get, and people eventually, you know, the truth be told, you know, you're finding mm-hmm. attorneys are getting busted in court by having their briefs written. You know, novelists, you know, yep. sports writers, people that literally are saying, "Write it for me, so I can go to the you know go to the beach or go to the yep. pool." They're getting exposed pretty quickly. And as writers, authenticity is our is our brand. I mean, this is us writing it. This is our love for what we do. And if AI, if we click the little magic little star button on that little thing, yep. say, "Go ahead and write it for me," you know, you're, you're there's no authenticity to that. Yeah, it's just it's just that's not why I did it to become a computer operator. I wanted, to, exactly. and 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 I'm always funny. And, 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 and by the way, that's something people tell you. Oh, you people, you, they don't want funny thrillers. Mm-hmm. They want <laughs> Jack Reacher kicking ass. You that's know? right. Cars um, blowing up. You know, yeah. people. And I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would be competing with a guy who's much better at that genre than me, and mm-hmm. giving up my strength because my so strength did, is being funny. Did, did Jr. You... is Jr. is funny. Mm-hmm. And even though he gets in some real scrapes in this one, man. He does. Yeah. um, And this one's a little more um, intense, Mm -hmm. a little darker than the rest of them. And and as I go back around, they're going to be a little darker and more. But you keeping it. Are you going to keep it there or are you going to have comic relief in the the darkness? How do you plan on balancing that out? Most of the comic relief is JR's comments as he Mm -hmm. goes along. It's Mm -hmm. how he views life. Mm -hmm. Um, and although the villain in the fourth one is pretty funny in a dark way, he's really bad guy. And, and he's, um, he, he can be a little, con- actually the all three point of view characters are kind of funny because you, you see what they're thinking. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it isn't like, uh, do you watch, um, Bosch? On, no, no, I don't watch Bosch. But Bosch. I, 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 I've seen Bosch, it all- Bosch has a couple characters. Mm-hmm. They're old detectives, and they're the comic relief. When they come on, they're the funny guys. 
it's not like that. It's it's built into the. Mm-hmm. It isn't just stapled on. It's part of Jr.'s being. Mm-hmm. He's he's observing things. He's growing as a character. Yeah. He's observing the world. That's where most of the humor comes from. And it's beautifully done. So I want to ask you back on the AI question as well. When you first did making AI say, be my developer editor yeah. per se, did you find that to be better for you? Or do you miss having that human being that you can get on, say, where are you coming from for this? Huh? Where do you really see yourself taking AI? Oh, no, I don't miss a human being at all because it costs, it, it would cost, I would have paid $50,000 so far mm-hmm. for this book to mm-hmm. have somebody do the level of developmental editing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you you develop a letter, you send something away, you get it back a week later. By the time you get it back, you've already rewritten that chapter. Oh, yeah, that's true. This so, is this is real time. Bang. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, and, and you'll say, and sometimes I say, no, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Try again. That's not what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. And it'll come back. And you don't always have to take their advice, mm-hmm. but their advice is good. So, it's like, so it's it's like having an expert editor mm-hmm. at your, whenever you want. Mm-hmm. So, so is I it- do miss, and, and, and I'm not criticizing people, it's what they mm-hmm. do, and they're busy and they can't sit there. I mean, they have, they have to charge you something, and if somebody's going to sit there with you all day, they're not going to charge you a hundred bucks, they're going to charge you a lot more than that. They so, agree. and I just and I think anybody who's mm-hmm. getting into writing, better learn how to do that stuff. Yeah. And I'm not saying, hey, have the chat, or there's a lot of other programs to mm-hmm. write the thing for you. You know people are going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're going to get not, they're going to get exposed. They're going to get exposed. Yeah, yeah, but AI is getting better. Uh, I don't share your, uh, hey, AI is going to, everybody's going to get caught. I don't think they are. I, I'm on the other side of it because I'm on the tech side of it. And I just mm-hmm. know that it's it's never going to have the emotion of a human. It's never going to have the, the right tone. Well, it's, it's not as to... funny as me. AI, I haven't seen AI be as funny as me. No, I know. I've asked, it, I've asked it to write funny stuff and it's terrible at it. It's it's It doesn't have the human characteristic to that. Yeah. I think it's good for the research. It's If I need to go through petabytes of data to come up with header information that helps me get myself in the line of topics, I'm down for it. But the idea of saying, do this for me, why am I even here then? Except yeah, I'm not going yeah, yeah, to be a yeah. writer. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. what but kind of in closing today in our podcast, what's coming next? What Other than the rewrites that you're working on, do you have another golf book coming? What, what's coming next for you? Uh, not another golf book. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of tired of golf books, although they have a built-in audience. People search. Mm-hmm. The reason they sell is because people search for them. Mm-hmm. And and there aren't 50,000 titles every day like, mm-hmm. like there are in, in – uh, in novels mm-hmm. um i have another funny book coming i'm not going to mm-hmm. tell you what it's about yet and i have i have a rewrite not rewrite i have one of my favorite writers is mm-hmm. agatha christie believe mm-hmm. it or not mm-hmm. she was great agatha christie mm-hmm. could be the greatest mystery writer of all time agreed and i'm going to take her plot of one of her books and mm-hmm. put it in outer space. Okay. Well, is it going to be the Orient Express? Is it going to be? No, it's going to be the murder of Roger Ackroyd. Murder Roger and put that Which, in. Space. Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I don't remember seeing a movie. I think they made a movie a long time ago. But mm-hmm. mystery writers have voted that being the best mystery novel mm-hmm. of all time. And you're not. You know, it's in pretty space. good, right? It's in space. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you think about it. All right. There are only so many plots. I agree. And Shakespeare uh, took s- some Italian play and made it into King Lear. Yeah, that's right. And he took something else and made it into Hamlet. I'm mm-hmm. not pretending I'm Shakespeare, but you know, if you take uh, getting more contemporary, uh, Bruce Willis, what's mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Die Hard. Mm-hmm. They, they made Die Hard on an airplane. They made Die Hard. Sylvester Stallone made that one in the mountain, caught with a mountain and. Yep. John Lithgow was the bad guy. I can't remember. That was Die Hard on a mountain. Cliff, yeah, cliffhanger. Yeah. Cliff, yeah. yeah. They, they made Die Hard. In, uh, they made one hard rain or Die Hard in a flood or a yeah. hurricane or something. So I, I'm not, I don't think that's plagiarism. Take the basic plot and put it somewhere else. Uh, well, I, I think that'll be a real interesting experiment. 
I think it'd be good, and I'd love to have. I'd love to be your beta for that. So when that comes out or it's, it's in development, that's going to be a while. It's that I'm just outlining that. Okay. okay. So before we end, let me just say a couple things to sure. prospective writers. Okay. Two books. Mm -hmm. Do not read Stephen King's on writing. It's terrible advice. Okay. Stephen King says, "You don't need an outline. Just start writing." Mm -hmm. Write 2,000 words a day and you'll get better. Mm -hmm. Terrible advice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the book's pretty interesting because he talks mm -hmm. about his life. Mm -hmm. Terrible advice. All, all the book societies tell you to read that. Mm -hmm. Terrible. It's mm -hmm. uh, Quickly, I'm a guitar player. If you take a guitar and you don't know any chords and you mm -hmm. don't know any scales, you can't mm -hmm. play a song. Right. So if you're Stephen King says, hey, just write 2,000 words a day, you'll end up being a good writer. Wrong. Mm -hmm. That is wrong. You have to learn plot structure. Mm -hmm. If you're going to write a novel, you have to learn plot structure. There's mm -hmm. a lot of books that do that. Mm -hmm. Second, here's the book to read. It's not about plot structure. It's by a mm -hmm. guy named um, Stephen Pressfield. It's mm -hmm. called The War of Art. Mm -hmm. It puts you in the right mindset to read. He talks mm -hmm. about resistance. How when you sit down in the morning, there's this, there's this, thing emanating from yeah, distractions and all the things not to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not gonna tell you the whole book. Mm -hmm. He's written other books mm -hmm. that I like better, but I noticed young people are more influenced by the War of Art. Read mm -hmm. that book. Mm -hmm. Don't read Stephen King. <laughs> Stephen's not gonna get hurt that bad. You know, uh, just terrible advice. Mm -hmm. absolutely couldn't be worse mm -hmm. well thank you that jim i appreciate that public service announcement here on writers on writers <laughs> Richard Book Podcast. i'd love having you on again please keep me in advice of the next stuff coming out you're you're funny i love your books i'm a big fanboy of your stuff please continue to keep writing i love your love your stuff look forward to the next one coming out when you're coming east come on we'll play golf again i'll bring my clubs man it's good to yeah. see you again same Everyone, here Thanks, for everyone, making on Riders and Riders of the Triple Express for on this week's podcast with Jim Flynn. Thanks, Jim, for joining on. Everyone take care. I'll see you on next week. Take care. Okay.